Back to the global exchange. We want to turn our attention back now to the magnitude 7.6 earthquake that has hit just off the coast of uh, Costa Rica, the Pacific coast. As we noted here on the program, it's about 150 kilometers west of the capital of San Jose. Let's get more on this from the U.S. Geological Survey. Uh, and joining me on the line is Mike Lampede. Uh, he is with the USGS. Uh, Mike, what can you tell us now? Can you bring us up to date on terms of the, the magnitude, the depth, and there are early reports of damages. Do you have any sense of what's taking place on the ground? Yeah, let me tell you what we know. I, I do not have uh, reports of damage. Um, uh, CNN is, is generally the faster place to get that information. Um, but uh, USGS now uh, estimates the magnitude at 7.6. Uh, the location is actually under land in uh, northwest Costa Rica, as you said, about uh, 150 kilometers west of San Jose. Uh, it's at a depth of about 40 kilometers, likely on the subduction interface, the interface between the Cocos tectonic plate on the west that is diving down under the Caribbean plate on which Costa Rica sits. Uh, the good news is that it's likely that the location and depth are such that the shaking, well, uh, fairly, fairly significant, um, it may be that the depth has limited the damage. We're certainly hoping. Uh, in fact, uh, in fact, Mike, uh, initially there was a tsunami uh, watch on, and I know that's been lifted right now. When people who are just tuning into CNN are watching, say, 7.6, this must cause problems on the Pacific coast, and we must have a, a wave surge. But that necessarily doesn't have to take place. Uh, that's right. This is um, an earthquake that uh, appears to be located under land, and so the deflection of the Earth's surface which, if under the sea, would cause uh, potentially a, a tsunami, is likely not, not happening. Um, NOAA, National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, operates uh, tsunami warning centers, including the Pacific and the Caribbean. Their initial uh, estimate was that it was closer to the coast and larger, and so on that basis, on that very initial estimate, they, they did put out the precautionary uh, watches and warnings for tsunami. But, uh, but you know... Uh, Further examination puts it deeper and farther inland, so the, there's less worry of that. What does history tell us about the vulnerability of Costa Rica, and in fact all of Central America there, due to the fault lines? This is a sizable quake. What have we learned in the past with quakes around Costa Rica, and they've been centered on the Pacific coast or on the other side? This is on the Pacific coast, and, and there is a large uh, plate boundary uh, that runs all the way down the west the western oceanic uh, side of of Central America, and and South America, in fact, and and so the the whole region is subject to occasional very large earthquakes. This one's in the pretty large category, and sometimes they get even larger, and uh, and these can cause quite a bit of damage due to shaking and and also uh, tsunamis. It's also uh, possible for there to be smaller but much more shallow earthquakes that strike under land. And uh, those have happened in the past and have caused very large losses in Nicaragua, uh, Costa Rica, Guatemala, and so forth. Okay, Mike, you, you mentioned Nicaragua there. I understand the tsunami wash is still in place in uh, Nicaragua and Panama, and even on the Pacific coast of Costa Rica. What does that tell us, or is it too early to lift the tsunami wash? Would you just give us a sense of why or when they could be lifted. Well, the, the strategy that NOAA uses for tsunamis is to make you know, an, a very initial, very quick estimate of the likelihood for a tsunami. And they do this because it can be so few minutes between the time of the earthquake and arrival of a tsunami at the nearest coast, and so it's very essential that that be done quickly. Then, once done, um, NOAA looks for um, direct evidence of waves, either from coastal tide gauges or from their floating uh, buoys at sea, which measure the wave height. And it's, they wait for direct observations um, before canceling a watch or a warning, just to be on the safe side. And that okay, can take Michael, a little thanks more time very much for joining us. Uh, for those waves to reach the, the buoys. I understood. Yeah, thanks very much. Mike Lampede is uh, with the U.S. Geological Survey, joining us on the phone, as you can see there, by the locator in uh, Reston, Virginia, just outside of Washington, D.C. Well, that's an external view of what's taking place on the ground.
in uh, Costa Rica. Let's go to our internal analysis and bring in Mari Ramos at the CNN World Weather Center. What have you found out, Mari? Uh, well, very interesting, uh, some of the things that, uh, that a specialist from the USGS uh, was telling you. Um, the fact that it is on land is very important. The fact that this uh, quake actually uh, uh, is very intense but very deep is actually a good thing and less likely to generate tsunami waves. There's one more wave that a, an earthquake of this magnitude close to land like this could actually generate a uh, tsunami. Um, and that would be uh, when you, uh, Brandon, I don't know if you can hear me, can we pull up the shake map here? Uh, that would be, uh, because the shaking can be very intense, sometimes underwater landslides can occur. And what he's mentioning there about having uh, that initial assessment and doing it as a precaution. That's why from the very beginning you heard me say, we do not know if a tsunami was generated. This warning is giving us a precaution for areas that may be affected. The fact that the epicenter occurred over land is actually uh, a deterrent. But you see this bay right in here? This is an area that could have experienced uh, some waves. And when we talk about a tsunami, this is something else that's very important. It doesn't have to be like what we saw in the Indian Ocean. Uh, it doesn't have to be like what we saw in Japan. Sometimes even very small waves, uh, half a meter, several centimeters, are enough to cause, cause flooding, especially in low-lying areas right along the beach. And in bays such as this one, those areas like that could be more uh, likely to experience uh, flooding from uh, uh, even a small tsunami. In this case, we don't know if a tsunami was generated. If it had been, those waves would have already reached those areas, particularly closest to the epicenter. And in those areas uh, where Nicaragua is located, we'll be getting there pretty soon. And in Panama, in about 20 minutes or so. Back to you. The president of Costa Rica says there are no reports of casualties from a major earthquake there this morning. The 7.6 magnitude quake was centered on the northwestern Pacific coast, about 140 kilometers from the capital, San Jose. The earthquake caused a lot of shaking and some damage. One hotel owner near the epicenter says everything fell off the shelves and that the ground was rolling. Tsunami warnings were issued for much of Central and South America, but are now in effect only for Costa Rica, Panama and Nicaragua. Jenny Harrison joining us now with the very latest on this from the International Weather Center. How's it looking? Hey, Fanula, yeah, just as you said, of course, the good news is that the tsunami warning has been lifted for many areas. Let's just to show you, first of all, where we are talking about. Remember, you've got all these uh, major plates. This is the Cocos plate to the north. We've got the Caribbean plate. The Cocos plate actually is the subduction plate which goes underneath. And this is what has happened here. So there it is. There, of course, the epicenter, as you say, 7.6 magnitude, downgraded from the initial estimate of 7.9, 40 kilometers deep. Uh, the nearest place, Nicoya, just 11 kilometers, as you can see, from the epicenter. And uh, in actual fact, 141 kilometers uh, to the west of San Jose. Now, in total, San Jose has got a population of 335,000 people. You can see the shaking was actually strong across this entire region. Overall, about half a million people would have felt a strong shaking. The structures in this area, they are overall quite vulnerable to earthquakes. But having said that, this particular region is very underpopulated. It's actually a very big tourist spot. There's lots of jungles people visit. There's resorts on the coast. And the pager informations coming out of the USGS are actually green, which means very low likelihood of casualties and certainly of uh, any major damage. So of course we'll get more information in on this, but overall, despite the fact it was 7.6 magnitude for Nula, it was 40 kilometers deep, and it seems so far that we haven't had any major reports of any damage or casualties.